What is up, fam? It's Dr. Dale, the author of How to Raise a Dr. Wisdom from Parents Who Did It, the author of Pre-Med Mondays, the author of Black Men and White Coats, and of course, the author of the Dr. Doc Children series, and you're listening to the Black Men and White Coats podcast, and I am excited about today's guest and just about what we're talking about today. It's um, kind of a little bit different than what we normally do, but I think you'll enjoy it. I think, you know, I think different is good, and, you know, I'm taking a slightly different spin on it. Uh, just go around. Before I do, I just want to say, you know, hey, for everybody who supported us throughout the month of February, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And what we'll probably do actually is maybe next week or the week after, I'll probably just do a little a recap of the month of February so you guys understand how um, how incredible it was for, for what we're doing here at Black Men and White Coast. But specifically, we had a whole lot of people watch the documentary and, um, you know, I don't know how many Q&A sessions I did last month with large hospital systems, top med schools, all that stuff like that. You know, we did a whole lot of them last month and we had some really, really great stuff kind of come from that. So thank you to everybody who supported us with the documentary and just thank you to everybody who's, you know, kind of uh, just back in the mission. We've had so many more people just kind of get behind what we're doing over the course of the past month. And we're really, really appreciative of that. All right, so I'm not gonna take up too much of your time doing other stuff. because I'm excited about today. We do something a little bit different than we normally do. Um, today with Black Men and White Coast, we're going to talk about, so like, let me let me take a step back. One of the things people always ask me is, hey, Dr. Dale, how are you able to do so many different things, right? How are you writing books? How are you making documentaries? How are you running Black Men and White Coast, diverse medicine, blah, 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 and still practicing medicine and be, you know, with your family and coaching, all the stuff like that. So I get those questions a lot. Um, and I can, and maybe that'll be for a different episode. We'll talk about that. But the one thing that I, I take out of that question is, how is it that you're able to impact change in a different way? And one of the ways that I try to impact change is, is by being an author, by writing, right? Um, and I'm excited about today because we're going to talk about that general idea as to how do you impact change via a different vehicle. And that different vehicle today we're talking about is writing. So my guest today is, uh, um, he's no stranger to the show. I mean, as a matter of fact, I think other than my voice, he's probably the voice you heard the most on this show. This is his third time of being on Black Men and White Coast podcast. Dr. Stephen Noble, cardiothoracic surgeon, um, associate producer, um, level backer for the Black Men and White Coast documentary, and so many other things, live chair, so many other things I get into. But Dr. Noble, how are you doing, my friend? How are you doing today? Doing great, Dale. Appreciate to be here, family. Yeah, so, you know, I wanted to, you know, I sent you a message during the week, and I was like, hey, I want to get you on the show and, and just talk about being an author. And this is different, right? Um, and for me, it was important here because you're a first-time author and of course because you took my course so of course shout out to my course but you're a first-time author and not just a first-time author but you wrote a good book a good sure. book um so uh, we're filming for so those of you guys who are watching i got the book right here in my hand so i'm gonna hold it up on the camera so you guys can see it so the heart of a hero the dr daniel hell williams story um before we talk about the book itself I want you to kind of tell us, so, so why did you even want to write a book? How did you, you know, to impact change? And because and, that's what the episode is really about, right? It's about um, you decided to take a different vehicle to impact change for the field of medicine. Tell me about that. So uh, great question. I mean, it really all started um, back in uh, last year, really, um, uh, going to the Black Man White Coat Summit there in Chicago. And uh, it was really uh, participating as the associate producer for the documentary. And then uh, the following day, having the, the, the summit. And during that summit, uh, you know, it was a great kickoff. And uh, Senator Dick Durbin kicked it off by uh, telling the story of uh, Dr. Daniel Hale Williams. And Dr. Daniel Hale Williams is a personal hero of mine. And people always ask when they take a look at my, uh, my Gmail uh, email, uh, I have a photo of Dr. Danny Hill Williams instead of, you know, as my profile picture. And everyone always asks, you know, who is that individual? So hearing uh, Senator Dick Durbin just really tell the story about his life in that sort of uh, uh, environment uh, to a group of youth uh, really being inspired to, to become white coats, um, it, it just really uh, spoke to uh, something in my heart as far as, you know, really being able to tell uh, uh, Dr. Dan's story uh, from a perspective of someone that, uh, you know, idolizes this guy from the standpoint of, you know, he's one of the reasons as to why I'm in heart surgery to this day. And so uh, that really kind of planted the seed. And uh, thereafter, uh, uh, you know, it was just serendipity. Uh, I got an email from you in regards to uh, teaching folks on how to write a book. And, you know, yeah. one thing led to another. I took the course and uh, the rest is history. And it was just really a, a great sort of uh, family experience because I had my nephew, uh, kind of edit the book. He he was one oh, of the nice. first uh, how old, how old, individuals. How old is, 
How old is he? Oh, he's, he's 11. He's 11. So during the COVID pandemic, he was uh, staying in our house in California. And uh, he was the first sort of focus group individual, aside from my uh, uh, 14-year-old daughter and 17-year-old uh, uh, son and our 40-year-old daughter. Uh, he was the, the other person outside the house that really was able to read it and was just really inspired. Him. And it, you got to pay, yeah, exactly. pay, pay him the editing fees. You got to pay, pay him for being the editor there. You know, you can pay him V-Bucks. So uh, he's, a, he's a big <laughs> esports sort of guy. So he's always getting paid in V-Bucks. And so just really to see his face light up uh, after, you know, taking a first look at the, uh, of the draft. And there was no illustrations at that time. Uh, I really felt like this was uh, something special. If, you know, if it wasn't, um, if I just, you know, made it for my kids, uh, I'd be happy. And, and, but to really see the experience and, and the expression on my nephew's face uh, really made it worthwhile. So it, it, it all really kind of started with that Black Men and White Coat Summit there in Chicago. So I love that, right? So, you know, another thing is people like, hey, Dale, Dr. Dale, how, like, you know, why'd you decide to do this? Or why that? Or how did you get going? I'm like, sometimes you just got to, like, like Nike, just do it. Sometimes you just have to do something, right? Because people just kind of get paralyzed. Like, what do I do? And how do I do this? Like, hey, sometimes just start doing it. And then next thing you know, before you're done, you got a book. So, I mean, those of you in the camera, you might be able to see this book. I just got this book, I don't know, a week, week and a half ago. And you guys probably can't tell, but it's all dinged up. It's all bent. The edges, you know, everything's all. This book has already been worn out since we got it. Let me tell you, let me tell you that, man. My, um, my middle child specifically, Jace, he got he got a hold of the book. Um, he read right through it, right? So he read it in like a day or something, took it to school, read it. Um, was so excited about it. He came home, he said, hey, dad, my, my librarian wants to know if they can keep this book in the library. Um, so I'm like, hold on, so that's my copy. Let me buy a new copy first and then, and then, I, then I'll you know, leave over to school. But I will tell you, you did a phenomenal job. And, you know, of course, you and I kind of worked on worked on this, you know, throughout the process. You, you know, um, we communicated about this. I remember when you were going through the arts work in the book, um, you know, we, we, we kind of talked about that and you, you have a really good art. So I'm looking at the book in my hand again and the art in this book is phenomenal. Tell me why, what, what, is, the, what, what is the importance of the artwork in the book to you um, to impact change, to, you know, to encourage kids to pursue this career in the field of medicine? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it really just starts from the beginning. I think, I think with the artwork, it's about telling the story uh, visually. And so, you know, there are certain things and certain themes that I wanted to present. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the whole sort of, you know, the first page in the, in, in the classroom to be able to present students that looked different from all different walks of life. Um, you know, those individuals that may be handy, uh, abled uh, in a wheelchair, different races, um, as well as being able to present uh, my son. And so there's a shout out to my son in the book because he's a little kid that's that's featured throughout the book, both on the uh uh, first and second page, as well as on page 35. So really to kind of give a uh, little Easter eggs to the people that are important to my life uh, was important. But yet at the same time, to be able to tell the story just visually uh, for individuals to kind of feel the emotions um, that, uh, that uh, Dr. Dan must have uh, gone through, uh, whether he was growing up, um, uh, you know, as a young kid, uh, experiencing the loss of his father, doing things that we just don't like to do as far as some of the first few jobs that he had. Uh, for me, it was really about um, envisioning what things were uh, would have looked like back then and really try to see if uh, we could recreate that. It's awesome. I love how you said so. Obviously, okay, so two two book announcements, right? The first one is y'all go grab The Heart of a Hero, um, the story about Dr. Daniel Hill, which is a phenomenal story. When I was in med school, um, we did problem-based learning in medical school, and, we, and so I'd be in the room, and when it was my turn to teach, I would always have a quiz at the end of my, my, my teaching sessions. And that was always one of the questions I asked, you know, I always ask a question about Dr. Daniel Hill Williams. Um, so two big announcements. Number one is go grab this book, The Heart of a Hero, um, the Dr. Dr. Daniel Hill Williams story. And second one is go grab my, right? So go, go grab my Dr. Dr. book. Um, so what I did with my book is, so I've written, you know, five of these books down. Um, actually, I've written seven, I think, but I've only put out five of them. And I just compiled them. So I'm just, Dr. Noble, I'm looking forward to you getting, you know, doing yours at some point too. So you can see how thick this is right here, right? It's like 100, yeah, 165 pages or so of all my Dr. Doc book one through five compiled into one book. So y'all go grab this, it's book one through five, go grab both of these books. Um, but you know, I'm thinking about my book right now because you mentioned the Easter eggs, like you put your 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 son in um, page one, two and 35 and there's actually really nice pictures. I'm looking at them right now, I was just looking at them. Um, and of course my Dr. Doc series is about my family. So you look at my book, it's Dr. Doc with Tony and Jace, you know, Tony and Jace are my boys. Um, my daughter's in there, my wife is in there. Um, so kind of like 
what, you know, what you were saying, I think, I think something that's so cool about writing books is as a physician is it kind of puts us in the driver's seat of creating something that we think is relatable to people. So if it's relatable to my son, it's probably going to be related to your son or other kids like that, right? Um, and that's that's what I'm seeing in your book too. As I'm looking at the picture, and I, was, I you know, I, I didn't notice until you just said it about the wheelchair. I think that's really cool on that very first page. I, I didn't even notice it when I looked through this the first go around, the first time around. Um, so wh- why is why writing a book like what specific? I know why you I know why you wrote it, but what specifically is kind of different about writing a book than like maybe just going to a kid's school or doing something else? Like what type of impact, lasting impact do you think the book can have in terms of actually having a, you know, a true impact on the film message? Let, let, let me just say this. A lot of people ask, hey, Dale, I, you know, how do I write a book? And again, y'all go check out my course, um, authorandwebinar.com. Y'all go check that out. Um, but a lot of people would ask like, hey, Dr. Dale, like you don't want to write a book. I want to make a lot of money because you're thinking you're going to get rich off of books, right? So I'm trying to tell you guys, for anybody who thinks you want to write a book to get rich, it's probably not going to happen, right? It's probably probably not going to, probably not going to get rich off of it. Um, I can teach. I can teach you ways to get revenue and make good money off of it, but don't go into writing the book for that reason. So, as a cardiothoracic surgeon, I know writing this book is not gonna impact your paycheck really. So, why this vehicle specifically rather than something else? So it it really started uh, came down to the question that's asked in the, in the class as far as uh, being able to write something that you're passionate about and something that you could, uh, uh, you know, feel as if you're an authority about it. And I think that when it comes to Dr. James as being a, uh, you know, a hero, you know, him being a hero of mine, um, it was the, the the fact that the story was something that touched my life. And I hope that by telling it from my perspective, it'd be able to do the same for, for other individuals. And as far as writing the children's book, it really goes back down to the, the mission of Black men and white coats and really just trying to inspire uh, youth of all ages, to, um, but in particular, young black boys and girls to get inspired uh, to be uh, physicians. And so it was really a concerted effort to really uh, target uh, that critical third grade because we have the uh, we've heard of the uh, uh, school to prison pipeline. Uh, we really are, are are really trying to build that that school to medicine pipeline, um, that school to uh, esports to medicine pipeline. And so taking that concerted effort of of creating a book that would really be geared at individuals in those critical years, that third grade. Uh, fourth grade, those elementary years, trying to inspire them and kind of capture their, their their focus and their attention early, and giving them that 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 positive encouragement that they can do whatever it is that they want to do, no matter uh, where they come from, was really the impetus for writing the book, and really just uh, took on a, a passion and a life of itself, and 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 really it was uh, uh, yeah nothing that I really try to do uh, uh, to be rich or famous about, um, and as one of the things that you talk about in the course is something that you do, you know, you, you it, it's almost a loss. Um, but it's something that it's worth it. You know, you're, I'm making an investment to the future. I'm making an investment in our children. And to me, that's worth more than, you know, diamonds, riches, and all the fame in the world. It's really uh, hearing the stories of, of kids read the book, uh, it being uh, uh, making that impact of going to uh, libraries and in other environments. And for me, um, it's to be able to produce something that can be spread uh, far and wide uh, really uh, allows the impact to go further than um, being able to uh, to go to you know a school event here than a school event there, but really to be able to uh, uh, spread the message as far as it possibly can go. I love it. I love it. I'm gonna correct myself. A second ago, I said author and webinar at authorandexpert.com. So if anybody wants to um, take the course, also it's authorandexpert.com. But I love what you're saying, and, and and you know, so I mean, what the book does is it carries your message without you being there. And, and, you know, what's awesome about your book is it carries not just your message, but it carries Dr. Daniel Hill Williams' message, right? So it carries the message without you being there. You can go to a school and you should still, I encourage going to schools, right? So we're, we're all about going to school, talking to kids, of course. But at the same time, like, you know, Dr. Stephen Noble can't be at every school, but your book can be at multiple schools. So while you're at this school, your book could be at, you know, 100 other schools. And that one kid who's in the library who goes and grabs his book, you know, this, I mean, this is a good book, y'all. I was gonna say, y'all go get this. This is a really good book. Um, of course, the story is great. The illustration, just everything about this book is good. This is one of those types of books that you can imagine in every library that's getting read by the librarian during Black History Month. Like legit, I can imagine this, this being like that book, right? And the impact that that can have on, and what you said in that third grade, like, you, you know, this could, this could probably go down first grade, right? In kindergarten even, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the impact that the book can have on, on those kids from an early age, and for you, it's an investment, right? So for you, it costs you money to make the book. It costs you a lot of time to make the, you know, cost you time and stuff like that. Um, but overall, 
for a teacher or for a med school that wants to give it out, whatever, it's not, it's not a heavy investment for them. All they have to do is just get a book and then put it in the library. And how many lives are going to be impacted for that? And you, you, you only got to write the book once. All right. Um, you know, so I really like this idea of, of books being a vehicle. Um, to, to kind of really impact change. I tell you, when I started Doc, a lot of people might know why, why I started Dr. Doc. When I, I, I wanted my kids to read a book, my boys to read a book with somebody who looked like them. My daughter had Doc McStuffins, right? So that's already out there. I wanted my boys to have a book where they could see young black kids doing stuff in science. And it just wasn't there. Um, so that's why I started writing the Dr. Doc series. And, you know, I can't tell you how many messages and stuff we get now about, you know, the, how it impacts people's lives and your book's going to do the same thing. So what's, any thought as to the next one? Because I, you know, my hope for you is that you that you come out with a series, man. My hope is that it's not just a one and done, but you got you got something else, um, you know, along those lines. I, I love the theme. I don't know if you're gonna stay in the history, you know, medical history, or what, what what's what's next from that perspective. So you know, it's uh, you know, really hoping. Uh, I, I really would like uh, some of our uh, uh, black women and, and white coat sisters to uh, to take on the story of Dr. Myra Adele Logan, the first um, uh, female heart surgeon, uh, black woman. Um, I think for me, the next book that I would write would would probably have to do with um, just really the the philosophy of of, of barbershops. Um, barbershops in, in, in healthcare and hair care. And, and one of the themes that, that you see uh, in, the, in the heart of the hero, uh, the Dr. Dan story, is that he was a barber. Uh, he started out as a barber, but then revolutionized medicine uh, by, by starting the first integrated hospital in the United States. And so for me, uh, just really uh, the impact that, that, you know, this goes back to a debate, you know, conversation, a, a previous podcast that we had, as far as who's more influential, the, you know, the physician or the barber. And so for me, I, I think the, uh, the next book idea that I've had is, is really about expanding upon that whole, whole principle of uh, hair care, uh, of healthcare through hair care, and, and really the, the place that I think that uh, we can reimagine medicine uh, through the barbershop in, in hair salons. And so that's uh, uh, the next uh, project on the, on the list. And I love this. So, so I'm looking at the book. I'm not going to spoil your book, but it says by the time he was 17, he had his own barbershop, his own barbershop, right? Um, so the other thing about there is, you know, is this idea of ownership and business and such. So based on that, I'm going to ask you this question. I don't know if it's fair to ask you this question, but um, no, it's fair, it's fair. So a lot of people will come to me and a lot of people have this, this dream of they write books and they want to get published by the big publishers. Uh, but you took my course and you know that my course is all about self-publishing, right? Own your own stuff, right? Own your own stuff. So tell me about that. Now, why did you end up saying, hey, let me try to go the self-publishing route? Obviously, it's easier to get self-published and, and you know, blah, 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 right? It's, you know, to go to go find the publisher and such as work. But what would you say the benefits of getting, of doing it yourself rather than, you know, chasing this, you know, I don't, I don't want to say it's an old, um, I think it's, uh, you know, almost almost an older way of thinking. It's still applicable to, if you can get a great publishing deal, um, that's fine. But trust me, most of those publishing deals are not going to make too much money off of, right? But so why that route versus, you know, trying to get a big publishing house? I think it, it really goes uh, back to the reason as to, uh, why I wrote the book as far as inspiration. Um, you know, one, the entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship aspect, really try to leave something for, um, for my family, for my children, something that they could look back on and say, hey, my dad did that. Um, but as I started to communicate, uh, especially to my middle son, uh, when I told him that I wrote a book, he kind of laughed and chuckled like you did. And then it, it, he was like, you know, I wanted to do the same thing. I've been having ideas about writing a book. And so it just really, you know, to be able to get over that hurdle, um, and, and it be relatable, people started to say, you know what, how did you do it? And I'm thinking about doing the same thing and now starting to hear them talk about writing their book and, and really going through the process. I think it really um, allowed it, uh, it, it made it more relatable and more uh, accessible. Um, people uh, had this notion of writing a book uh, requires a lot of complex sort of things, but then when when they're able to see the fruits of your uh, the fruits of your work and your labor, they're like, oh, I can do that. And, and and I guess it's one of those things that my kids see. If he can do it, then I definitely can do it. And so it's just one of those things that that's pretty nice. Uh, that that sort of aspect of of doing it yourself. Um, uh, of going through the process and then being able to teach others how to do it, I think was uh, was, was something that was uh, very nice. Yes, that's what I love about it. Like all these things like, you know, for us, like the Black Men and White Coast, the book writing, the documentary is going to be a little bit harder, right? But, you know, a lot of stuff that we do, that's the whole idea is, right? 
is that we do so we can teach other people how to do, how to, how to replicate it. Um, and you hope that the right people do it, right? I don't want the wrong people to copy our stuff, right? But, you know, you, you, that, that idea is you want to do something, you want to set um, a, a template or a was talking about the blueprint, but make that so it can be replicated so other people can can get that stuff done, right? Um, and to, what's the word I'm looking for? Amplify, to amplify the message, amplify the mission, right? So, hey, Dr. Noble wrote a book. Hey, let me see, let me talk to him, see how he did. Oh, now, hey, now maybe I can write it. But I will say writing a book is not easy. Now, tell me, what, what, tell me about the process for you. Two things, two things. Tell me about the course. How was my course? I want to know about my, I want the feedback, right? Tell me about my course, right? I got a pitch about my course. I'm promoting my course. You want to write a book? Go check out authorexpert.com, right? So tell me about my course. Um, how was that for you? And then the second part of this, tell me what was the actual process like for you writing the book? Uh, the course was great. The course, I was able to do it. Uh, in I like did the, not pay uh, him to say that. I did not pay him <laughs> to say that. Was that. The, course was, the course was great. You know, as, as, as a busy surgeon, you know, you want something that's quick, you know, something that it's quick. It gives me the information. And, you know, I've taken courses before in which they kind of lead you on as far as, you know, maybe in the next uh, module, they're going to give you all the all the answers, all the tips. But it was something that was very relatable. It gave you the key resources and the key tools that you need to just get started. Um, and that was uh, the biggest thing as far as just get started. And so uh, the biggest thing that I really liked about it was the, the calendar. I'm a big outline sort of guy. I'm a big, you know, checkbox sort of guy. So the calendar was great, you know, to figure out, okay, I can do this in, in three months, four months, and to be able to put myself on a schedule and just knock it out and then be able to have, okay, on this day, I'm supposed to be doing research or this day, I'm supposed to be proofreading. And so if I just spend, you know, this day knocking out my 500 words, and then I plan on this day, I'm able to kind of plan out how that's going to relate to the rest of aspects of my life. So I'll get up in the morning or do it, or I'll do, you know, 500 words before I go to sleep. And then, uh, you know, I, I think the, the, the course was great in regards to providing the resources as far as how do I find an illustrator? How do I find a proofreader? And that was the thing that was great about this book was from the standpoint of, of having the control of picking out who my editor was going to be, who my illustrator was going to be. And I'm a big Wale fan. And so for me, this was a big theme of Wale, you know, root for everyone that's black. And so this was really a community, a village sort of expert. And so I found a retired uh, uh, teacher, um, uh, you know, on the East Coast uh, in Baltimore, uh, who was proofreading a, a, a nice uh, a black lady, and she and she was great. She had never heard the story before. She knew about Johns Hopkins. She knew about Vivian Thomas, Mr. Vivian Thomas, who I alluded yeah. to in the book. She knew about uh, 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 Levi Watkins and Dr. Higgins, and so um, she had never heard of the story. And so it was great to have her um, participate in the beginning process, as far as the uh, the pubs at it, um, because. You know, I'm, I'm a heart surgeon. And so I wrote the book um, kind of not at the level for, for children. And so I needed someone to kind of break it down uh, to a, a language in which kids could understand. And, and I just really gave her the instructions. Look, I'm trying to gear this book for, for, for children. And so she did a great job of really being able to kind of bring um, my, my words and the narrative to a language in which kids can understand. And then with the illustrator, uh, who was a great uh, uh, lady from, from Chile, and she just did an awesome job in really recreating the images. And we went back and forth um, in really trying to create the perfect sort of story and the perfect images. And so that was just um, a, a great uh, shout out to both Anna as, as well as my, my editor. Um, uh, she, uh, they, did, they did a great job. Yeah, I mean, it's phenomenal. This book is phenomenal, see. Um, and the images, again, the images are so, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like sultry. Um, it's it's really nice. I mean, it's really Black history-ish. I don't know how else to describe it. The, you know, it's, it's phenomenal imagery in this book. Um, phenomenal. Um, really good. So next book will be barbershop stuff. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't quite go with the series, but I, but no, I feel no, you. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but I feel you. Um, Cause I enjoy, I understand, and you know we, we haven't talked about live chair in, in detail, but you know you guys check out live chair as well. So um, the barbershop thing will make a lot more sense to you. Um, and the other, you know, we we won't get into it today. But the other thing that at some point, man, you know, you know, you're you're a you're a regular on the show now, so I have to get you back and talk about the the esports stuff. That's something that I also find fascinating. You know what? I, pretty much what I really like is the fact that you know you have a similar mission to mine in terms of you know certain things trying to get you know that's not our entire mission right so it's not like you and i all we do is try to get more black boys and girls into med school we don't that's not all we try to do but that's that is a focus of, of things that we try to do right um i just love the different angles you take to get there so pre pretty much kind of the message of this the message of the show is this episode is 
there's different ways to reach the kids to get them you, to consider things we're interested in, right? You know, Dr. Noble's book, Heart of a, Heart of a Hero. You guys go get the book, right? Heart of a Hero. Um, that's one way to reach the kids. Dr. Noble does a lot of stuff with e, with esports, right? Um, so that's one way to reach the kids. Um, this this live chair idea, which is just phenomenal, which is again at some point, what's the what's the live chair website? Live chair hub. It's a uh, live chair l i v uh, live chair co. Uh, check it out at live chair co. So live chair co. So check that out, right? Um, so even though that's not directly in terms of like building the pipeline, all that stuff is connected in there. So again, the message here is there's different ways to reach the youth. And that's one of the things that, you know, I get asked all the time. People ask me to sit on panels, talk about, you know, yada, yada, yada. How do you reach the youth? Like, how do you do it? My guys, there's so many ways to reach the kids. And we act like there's people like, oh, it's so hard to get into schools. I'm like, there's an infinite ways, there's infinite ways to reach these kids, you know, like write a book. You know, um, you know, go to the barber shop, get them playing video games, you know, get them in a real life sports program, get them doing chess. So many ways to, to reach the kids and then ultimately kind of expose them to medicine. Number one is you just have to care about them, right? That's what it really comes yeah. down to. But anyways, I, I won't keep you up too long, Dr. Noble. Some of you guys in the video can probably see Dr. Noble's got some paint, some paint on him every now and then. He's a, uh, he, right. I, I got him in the middle of a paint session here. So if you wonder what that white stuff is, you see, I think you got some on your arm there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing some uh, household uh, renovations and uh, trying to create my esports lab in the back of my house. So uh, yeah, we're, we're get, getting the work in. <laughs> there you go, esports lab. So I'm talking about, man. But all right, seriously, guys. So you know, we, we need you guys to help. If you're listening, we need y'all. Yeah, we need y'all to um, to um, get our books up on the get this bestseller list, right? So a lot of tricks and trades to to making your book do well. Um, one of them is we need the people who you know support what we do to support. The books, right? Um, so, Dr. Nob, you can say if you have anything, but I'll tell you my book, Dr. Doc, books one through five. I'm holding up in the camera for those who are watching, maybe. Um, Dr. Doc, books one through five. So, go on Amazon and get this. I'm going to make it free. The ebook, I'm going to make it free. Um, goodness, what is tomorrow's date? Oh, my goodness. So, we're doing some Sunday night. So, I'm going to make it free March 8th, 9th, and 10th. March 8th, 9th, and 10th. I'm making this Doc to Doc with Tony and Jay's books one through five, the Kindle version, the ebook free on Amazon.com. So y'all go grab that. Go check it out. Um, you know, um, I, I just want you guys to have it. And, and of course, I want I appreciate you guys' support. Dr. Noble, you got anything for, for your book? Yes, indeed. Uh, in light of uh, my brother, Dr. D uh, Dr. Dale, I'm going to do the same thing. So the Heart of the Hero, uh, will, the E uh, Kindle version will be uh, free, March 8th, 9th, and 10th. And so uh, looking forward to that. So uh, I you know, really would like to just really get the story out to everybody. And so uh, this is for uh, youth, adults, um, kids. It, it, it's for everybody. And this is a story that really impacts, uh, that really just talks about America. And uh, what we need to do to, to really uh, help each other and, and it really just to, uh, take everybody uh, to really make that impactful change. Excellent. That's a wonderful one. So y'all both, y'all go to Amazon.com, Dr. Doc with Tony and Jace, books one through five, ebook for free, and The Heart of a Hero, the Dr. Daniel Hill Williams story. Um, next three days, y'all go out and grab it. So March 8th, 9th, and 10th. Man, Dr. Noble, my guy, um, thank you again. My most regular guests on the, on the show. It's a fair without me doing this. Um, but I love it, right? So when people are doing good work, you want to hear from them, you want, you want to get them on the show. Um, so I really, really appreciate you joining the show. And again, to the listeners, take home message is there's different ways to achieve the mission. There's different ways to reach the kids. You can write a book, you can do the esports a lot. Um, making a documentary, making a documentary is, a, is kind of a whole different level type of thing though. So that's different from writing the book. So we have, to, we have to talk if you want to go that route. But be creative, right? Do different things to reach these kids. And I'm really excited. After you, I don't know how far you are in your esports lab, but you know, I, I, I do want to I do want to hear you. I do want to get that on the show and kind of talk about that. Um, That'd be great. Yeah, because you can imagine video games, sports, being a surgeon, hand-eye coordination. I imagine, I can only imagine there's so much connection there that you know we don't think about sometimes. Um, but my guy, thank you. I appreciate you for being on the show as always. I know you're a busy man, so it means a lot to me that you take the time out to, to hop on here. Um, to the listeners, again, go grab these books. Dr. Doc with Tony and Jay's books one through five is going to be free March 8th, 9th, and 10th in the heart of a hero. 
Um, it's going to be free March 8th, 9th, and 10th on Amazon.com. To my pre-meds, check out premedmondays.com. To everybody, pre-meds, doctors, advisors, check out diversemedicine.com. Hop on there. Um, we connect students with mentors, mentors with students, recruiters are on there, um, all sorts of stuff. And we're actually working on um, wrapping the app back up. We used to have an app. We're bringing the app back out. So we're wrapping that up. So hopefully we'll get the app to you guys here in the next few weeks. Um, uh, subscribe to the podcast. So if you guys listen, if you guys like what we do, if you support our mission, please you know, hit that subscribe button and share the episodes. Love you guys. Enjoy it. And we will see you next time.